Hello everyone, welcome to AWS Tutorials. In AWS Tutorials, we used workshops and exercises to learn about AWS services. These workshops and exercises we published to our website aws-dozo.com and you can use uh, those exercises to and workshops to implement certain scenario and learn about AWS service. Today we are going to talk about how you can use Python based code using AWS uh, IoT device SDK to communicate with AWS IoT core. Let's first understand how does your device to IoT code communication works and then we'll talk about how to use Python based coding to implement it. So if you look at this uh, diagram over here, that pretty much explains how your device to IoT, IoT core communication works. So suppose this is your device, which could be um, yeah any sensor or 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 or, or vibration, uh, you know any kind of sensor device. Uh, and then this uh, device first you have to register to AWS IoT core as a thing. Once you register the uh, IoT, uh, this device as a thing, uh, it generates uh, uh, IoT certificates. Uh, these are X509, uh, X509 certificates, which are generated. And these certificates are used by device to authenticate to the AWS IoT core. Uh, and once you have this uh, device regist registration done and IoT certificate uh, generated and copied back to your device, uh, then you use a uh, uh, public subscribe model uh, to make this MQTT protocol based communication. So for instance, if device has to talk to talk to the, the AWS IoT core, uh, then you um, uh, actually uh, create a, a topic at the AWS IoT core, which IoT core subscribe to, and then device sends an MQTT message to that topic and due to subscription, IoT Core uh, gets that message, uh, uh, no, uh, receives that message. And if IoT Core has to talk to device, then in that case, device uh, subscribes to a topic, and then to that topic, this AWS IoT Core sends the message, and due to subscription, device uh, receives the message. So you can pretty much see that it's a topic-based public subscribe model to make this communication work. It's pretty simple and straightforward, but it's very powerful. So keeping this kind of communication method in mind, suppose if you're running a device and you want to write some kind of code or firmware to make this communication happen, uh, we are going to learn that today. So we will use Python and we'll use AWS IoT device, uh, uh, device SDK to write a code for the device, which um, device can use to do this kind of communication, uh, to make this kind of communication uh, work. So what are you building today? What we're building is pretty straightforward and, and it's kind of scaled down picture of what we uh, see earlier. So uh, we will have AWS IoT code and then uh, for device, since we don't have any physical device, we are going to create an environment into uh, AWS Cloud9, uh, which will configure with uh, um, Python, uh, um, will configure with AWS IoT device SDK for Python. This will work as a device simulator for us. So in actual uh, environment, you can run this code actually in a, in a Raspberry Pi and, and those kind of devices. But here, uh, for demo purpose, for the workshop purpose, we will use a, a Cloud9 environment. And we'll, we'll, uh, we'll run this code over here, and this code will, um, uh, this code will uh, then ensure this both-way exchange, where the device will send the message to the code, and the code will uh, send message back to the device. So that, that's a, that's a two-way communication is what we are going to cover, to cover today and learn how to do coding for the same. So um, about, uh, for, in order to learn this, we have created a workshop and this, uh, and this URL, this workshop, workshop has been also provided in the description box below. Uh, if you follow this workshop, then it tells you step-by-step -step process to, uh, to implement this scenario end-to-end. So let's go and uh, see what are the instructions provided in the workshop for the same. Uh, you can run this workshop at your own pace. You have a you have a you have a URL in your description box, and and, and you can simply uh, click on that and you can open the uh, open the workshop for yourself. Uh, 
But let me show you what we have uh, in the instructions. So here we have got this uh, workshop listed over here. Um, prior to this, uh, this workshop, we also have another workshop related to IoT, where we uh, talk about similar kind of communication, but using MQTT, uh, MQTT client. Uh, and here we provide some more detail. In fact, we show how the message can be used with AWS IoT uh, rule to route to a particular AWS services for the processing or storage purposes. So if you want to learn, and if you really want to go a little, little deep on this topic, then you might want to do this workshop first, and then you can come to this, uh, this particular workshop where we are focusing more on the development side uh, for such messaging. So uh, let's start this workshop. So you click on this link and it will start the workshop. And you can see here, uh, there are total seven steps you have to follow to complete this exercise and this workshop end to end. All you have to do is follow these instructions one by one in sequence and you are done. So let's start with the prerequisite. Uh, all you need is an AWS account. And if you don't have, then um, use this link to create a free trial account for yourself. Then we go to the next step where we have to register the device. In order to register a device, uh, you have to first create a policy and this policy will actually authorize the device to perform certain action on, in AWS IoT code. Uh, so, uh, I, uh, so what we do here is that, um, so I mentioned here that device has a certificate uh, and then certificates are associated with the policy and depending on the policy associated, uh, certain operations can be performed by the device. Uh, so first we create the policy. Uh, and in this case, we are taking it's very generic policy because we are not doing any fancy here. So we are saying that you can perform all type of actions for all type of resources. But actually, if you're going for any production implementation, then you might want to restrict your uh, devices to able to uh, say subscribe to any certain topics and able to publish to any certain topics. But here we're saying that, hey, you can publish and subscribe to any topics you want uh, because it's just, a, it's just a workshop to learn um, the uh, communication part. Uh, once uh, our our policy is ready, then you go and say, I want to register my 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 thing, my device, uh, and I give this device a name called Dozo Device One. Uh, then uh, once you uh, create the device, actually it uh, asks you to generate certificate. Uh, there are certain ways you can there are, there are multiple ways you can create certificate, but in this case we are taking a simple uh, scenario where you can. Uh, click on a button to uh, generate a certificate for yourself. Uh, the certificate gets generated, and this certificate you have to download uh, because um, your uh, your device side needs this certificate uh, to to be able to um, authenticate to uh, IoT Core Gateway and able to exchange the messages. Uh, so this 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 uh, certificates are downloaded to some local file where you are doing this workshop and keep uh, yeah, make sure that you know the place where you have copied this uh, certificate. Uh, after that, all we do is we'll, uh, we created uh, this policy earlier. We are simply attaching this policy to this particular certificate. And with that, our device registration is over. Now, in order to talk to device, you need to know the broker address, the, the, or you can say it is the IoT, uh, IoT gateway address where you have to send the message. Okay, that's that's the end point. We have to send the message and uh, and, and then authenticate using the uh, certificate. So if you click on the device and if you go to this interact menu over here, you can actually see the URL of uh, uh, the the endpoint. So please make sure you have noted down the broker address because you will need this uh, at later point of time. Uh, having done that, now my device site is ready. Now we move on to configuring, uh, no, 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 sorry, uh, my um, IoT core side is ready. Now we move down to, uh, to the device side. So first thing first, let's set up a Cloud9 environment where, because this we are going to use as a device simulator. So what we are doing here is that we create a uh, Cloud9 environment, uh, and then in, uh, in that we are selecting uh, Ubuntu as operating system, and after, once this um, uh, environment is ready, we check whether Python 3 is installed or not. Uh, we see yeah, Python, Python 3.6.9 is installed. Uh, then we use um, uh, then we use git clone command to uh, clone the device SDK. 
uh, from the GitHub. Uh, and once we have uh, cloned the device SDK, then we simply install uh, that device SDK on the client machine. So basically we are preparing our device to have uh, device SDK so that we can write Python code using device SDK to make this communication happen both ways. So we do that. Uh, and then after that, uh, uh, we also need to upload the certificate files over there. So in the previous task, you created a device certificate, uh, and those certificate has to be used by this Cloud9 uh, as a device to authenticate. So we need to copy the device certificate to this uh, to this environment, and that is pretty straightforward. You simply go to files, say I want to upload local files, and you simply upload the certificate. And of course, your certificate name will be different when you do this workshop because this is a certificate name uh, generated for me when. I created this workshop uh, when I built this workshop. Um, so once my um, device certificate has been copied to Cloud9, uh, my, my device side environment is ready. Now we will simply go and write the code, uh, which will do the exchange of the message. So we go to the next step, and basically we, we are going to create two, uh, two uh, Python files here. Uh, one will be publish, and second will be subscribe. Uh, the job of the publish is to send a message from IoT uh, from the device to IoT core, and the purpose of subscribe to receive a message from IoT core to the device. So two files to for two different communications. Um, you can put this code together as well, but in that case you have to do little uh, management. But uh, to keep it simple, I simply created two different files. So let's create first uh, your uh, publish uh, publish.py, which, which will send message from your device to the IoT core. And this is how the code looks like. Actually, you simply uh, go and uh, create an MQTT client, uh, and then you provide your, um, your device endpoint. And once you have provided the device endpoint, then you uh, provide your uh, then you provide your uh, uh, certificates detail over here, uh, and after the certificate details, uh, you connect uh, to the to the to the um, to the endpoint, and and these certificates are used to authenticate your connection. Uh, and after that, you simply uh, use uh, this topic uh, to send the message. So you are publishing message to this topic. That means IoT Core has to subscribe to this topic. Uh, to receive the message from the device. So simply, uh, this is the topic, this is the sample message, and you're saying, hey, simply publish this message to this topic. And then after that, I'm simply disconnecting uh, the, the client. Okay, So pretty straightforward and simple code, but it will do the magic. So we save it. Uh, once my publish uh, is, is, is code is ready, uh, we go and write the subscribe code. Uh, so, like we used uh, a general inbound, uh, a general inbound as a topic for the device to IoT core uh, communication, we are going to use uh, general outbound for other way communication. So, let's un understand how subscribe code works. So, in this case, we uh, again similar way create an uh, uh, IoT um, uh, MQTT client. Uh, use uh, configuration endpoint as well as credentials to uh, sorry, certificates to authenticate. We connect to the gateway and then we subscribe to general outbound. So device is subscribing to general outbound topic. Uh, and if uh, IoT core has to send a message, it has to send the message to general outbound topic. And I'm saying that when I subscribe to that, I'm putting this custom callback as a callback method. And this is this is where the method has been defined. It says, hey, uh, if it callbacks, tell me what payload I'm getting from the from the uh, from my subscription subscription call. And after that, actually, I'm simply uh, waiting uh, for my um, my message to arrive. So I'm just putting this input so that my execution holds. Uh, so when um, this message comes back, uh, yeah, I can then uh, yeah run the code to unsubscribe from this uh, topic, and then of course disconnect. Again, pretty straightforward topic, uh, uh, straightforward code to, uh, to, to do the communication. Now, having uh, built these two codes over here, now we are going to test it. So first we'll go and test device to IoT uh, core communication. So in order to do so, uh, we will use uh, this publish uh, publish uh, code. So we are going to the uh, we are going to the um, AWS IoT code, 
And there, uh, they, if you click on the test, it will open an MQTT client uh, for testing purposes. And here we are saying that, hey, IoT code, why don't you subscribe to journal inbound topic? Yeah, simply subscribe to journal inbound topic. Uh, and here the topic uh, subscribe. And now uh, actually code is waiting for any message arriving on journal inbound. Then we go to uh, our, our Python code in your Cloud9 environment and say, let's run publish.py. Uh, publish dot uh, no pi uh, method, and, and all we're saying is that hey, uh, they, because you now know, know that this 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 uh, this file has code to send matches to uh, general inbound topic. So uh, I'm simply doing that, and you can see that it is executed my code. It's first connected, sends the message, and disconnected. And when I do so, uh, actually, uh, if you go back to your AWS uh, uh, AWS uh, IoT code. Uh, subscription, uh, you can see that this message has been received by uh, the IoT code. So this was a, a, a test of sending a message from device to IoT code, which IoT code has received through the topic subscription. Now let's do other way around where the IoT code has to send a message and, IoT, and device has to receive it. So in order to do so, we'll use the other file, which is um, subscribe.py. Uh, so what we do here is that uh, first we go to cloud nine environment and we run this subscribe.py file. And what it does is that it connects to the connects to the uh, IoT code uh, after authentication, and then it's simply waiting for the callback. Yeah, so it's waiting for the callback to happen. Uh, and then we go to the uh, AWS uh, IoT code and we uh, simply uh, yeah uh, go to the subscription page which we have opened in the earlier uh, earlier task uh, and then you click on publish to a topic. So here it has uh, subscribed to general outbound topic and from the IoT code we want to send a message to general outbound topic so the device can receive it. Uh, so you go here and say, I want to uh, publish to a topic. Yeah, publish to a topic. Uh, and that topic is general outbound. And I simply put a message over here. In this case, I'm putting a JSON message over here. And we click on publish to a topic. And then this message get published to this topic. And the moment you get published topic, you can go to your uh, Cloud9. And you can see that that message has been uh, received by the Cloud9 environment, uh, which is working like a, a device simulator. Uh, so this was uh, uh, showing um, an example where your IoT uh, core is sending a message and it is released uh, and it is received by the device. So you have seen both way communication and that pretty much completes the uh, completes the workshop. Uh, the next step is to go and clean up the resources so that you don't incur any cost after uh, the workshop. Uh, so and that was all about this uh, workshop. Uh, ho hope you like it. And if you like, please click on the like button. If you have any feedback or suggestion, then please provide that. Uh, uh, please provide it either on your uh, our uh, uh, YouTube channel, or you can also go to our website. And our website has a contact us section where you can go and provide uh, such feedback. Uh, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, and in this, um, in AWS Dozo uh, website, we provide uh, workshops and exercises for uh, many uh, AWS services, each implementing a certain scenario. Uh, as, and we try to publish at least one or two workshop or exercise almost every week. Uh, so yeah, please stay tuned with what we are producing and yeah, um, learn uh, by implementing certain scenarios uh, using AWS services. Hope you liked the video. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thanks. Bye-bye.